introduce um, Steve Bishop, who uh, is a professor of mathematics at UTL and also um, organising, is one of the co-heads of the Futurist um, project. Um, and also Susie Moat, who's a research associate at the, uh, at the mathematics department uh, in UCL. Um, we've also got a respondent who is Jeff Johnson, who will be sitting over in the corner there in a second. Uh, Jeff is the professor of complexity science and design. Uh, joined the Open University in 1980, um, and he's also the head of the Department of Design, Development, Environment and Materials. He's also the president of the Complex Systems Society. Um, okay, so uh, without any further ado, I'm going to hand over to uh, Stephen Susie, who will speak for 15 minutes or thereabouts. Um, we'll then have a response by Jeff, and then we'll open it to the floor for Q&A once again. Thank you very much. Okay, thanks very much, then, Greg, uh, for the kind introduction. Um, I'm going to hand over to Susie in a moment, and you may think that's because I've been stung by the earlier remark about gender equality on the panel, <laughs> but actually it's, it's not so. Firstly, I'm a teacher and a facilitator, so I like to give other people the chance to talk, and I can listen then and formulate things more carefully. But secondly, Susie actually knows more about the project than me, and uh, on top of that, she probably delivers a better lecture than me. So I'm going to ask Susie to, to give most of the lecture, and I'll come in at the end. Okay, thank you very much, Steve, and thank you, Greg, for the um, earlier introduction. So I thought we can't really give a lecture with a billion euros in the title without really cutting to the chase and telling you what that billion euro story is all about. So the background to this is that the European Commission looked at a range of scientific projects, so for example CERN and the Human Genome Project, and said, well, we can see there that if we invest in science for a, in a particular project for an extended period of time, then that allows scientists to collaborate and work together towards a clear scientific goal. And so large achievements have been made through this sort of research funding approach. And so they suggested, we could look at doing this too. If we can find some projects within Europe which are visionary enough, ambitious enough, and will bring together different streams of research across Europe and across disciplines, then we will try and make a billion euros funding available over 10 years. I should say the reality is that um, the funding behind the scenes, exactly how it's implemented, of course, becomes a little messier. But we thought there is a real chance to be grabbed here because there is something that's changed recently um, in, in our area of research which allows us to make progress towards new scientific understanding, new technological designs, and we hope can inform policy decisions as well. So um, here I'm going to give you an overview, firstly, of the big thing we feel has changed and which has motivated um, a large part of this project. So the, as a number of people have mentioned today, our world has become very connected. And the reason it's so connected is um, the large-scale technological systems, the internet, which are allowing us to interact with each other in a different way. And similarly, we are interacting with these large-scale technological systems on a daily basis. And so our interactions with these systems essentially leave behind digital shadows of our collective behavior. So for example, people use Twitter, is the most obvious example. Obviously, it gives us a lot of information on what sandwiches people have eaten for lunch, but um, there are also the, there's different levels at which we can analyse this information as well. So we can look at the language that people have used. We can also look at what people have been searching for. So if we consider information collection as a key part of decision making, then we can actually see not only the later decisions, but the information that people were looking for before they tried to make these decisions. And the list goes on. We've all got mobile phones. We've got the tracks of people. The mobile communication companies have the tracks of the phone calls that we've made, the GPS records of where these phones have been. There's infrastructure, so there are sensors in the roads. Um, which, which measure where traffic has been. There's our Oyster card, another transport example. Of course, we, um, all of our travel through London, most of us have got an Oyster card. And so this is recorded in great detail exactly where all of us are traveling. And so the idea is that this new data gives us an insight into collective human behavior that we just didn't have by trying to look at surveys and um, other methods of, of collecting this data. We didn't, have the same, we didn't have the same detail and the same 
um, ex expanse, the same coverage that we get through the data that we have collected by interacting with these systems. And this isn't just of scientific fascination, but also businesses have picked up on this because they've realised that they can use this understanding of our collective behaviour to inform their advertising strategies or um, on, on, online, for example, or supermarkets, looking at what we've, what we've bought through our reward cards, etc. For example, there's a reasonably well-known case in, in the US of um, a supermarket chain trying to find out if people had just become pregnant by looking at, at, their, at their purchase histories because they knew that at that point they were likely to change their behaviour in a bigger way and they had a much bigger chance of suddenly selling them lots of stuff from their supermarket. So this is scientifically interesting and it's also interesting for business. And so the question is, is there a way that we can use this data to also inform policy? And we hope so. So I'm going to give you some examples of recent research in this area which has got, I think, some fairly obvious policy implications. So, for example, um, there was a study in Indiana where they took the kind of transport data we were talking about, so Oyster card data, but also looking at long-haul flights to build really specific, really exact um, pictures of global travel patterns. And they could combine these mobility patterns with ideas of um, how epidemics spread to try and predict the spread of the H1N1 virus. And this is, if, we can, if we can make better predictions about this sort of disease spreading, it's obvious that we can use this to try and inform deployment of health resources, vaccines, and um, control, perhaps, the, the spread of, of such an epidemic. Another example, um, recently in the US, and there's also a new project starting up at UCL, people have started looking at data from, um, from the police, so d data on where crime has occurred, but also where the tracks of where the police have been deployed, records of where 999 calls have been made, to try and better predict crime patterns so again we can try and inform the deployment of policing in order to reduce crime levels. And a final example, um, which is some work that um, I've been involved in recently, I should highlight um, Tobias Price as the key author on both of the studies I'm going to mention here, but this is also with um, Stephen, um, Dirk Helbing and Jean Stanley in Boston. So here we were looking at how people's behaviour, uh, how people's use of, um, of Google, so what people were looking for on Google, might be able to tell us, or might relate to various economic relators, um, various economic variables. So for example, if we consider search queries from the year 2010, then we can look at across 45 different countries how often people have looked for the next year, 2011, and how often people have looked for the past year. 2009, you can see 2009 decreases as the year goes on, 2011 searches for 2011 go up. And we can work out the ratio of um, searches for the next year to searches for the previous year, and we find that on average, where there are more searches for the next year, those countries tend to have a higher per capita GDP. So there's an interesting, this is, this is a new thing that we can do that we can measure um, we can find things that correlate with um, economic variables by looking at this new interaction with um, the internet. And also, um, we found that by looking at um, how often people look for certain terms on Google, um, for example, the term debt, um, we find that um, where the number of searches for the term debt increases, that we can anticipate, on average, a fall in the um, Dow Jones index the, the week after, for the period 2004 to 2011. So um, this is another example of how we can see, this is in particular, we can see people gathering information before making decisions later on, or at least this is one interpretation of it, and it gives us a new insight on, on these core social processes. And so the idea in Futurist is um, to try and bring this all together. So we already talked about the global span of um, these of, of, of epidemics. So we know that health problems spread. We also know very well that economic problems spread. We saw that particularly badly in 2008. And we know that if, um, so for example, crime related to drugs, that there is a clear global aspect to this sort of problem as well. And on a very simplistic level, it's also clear that economic problems can lead to crime, that crime problems can lead to health problems, that health problems can lead to economic problems. Very basic level, this is all interconnected on a, on a geographic basis, and this is all interconnected on a um, problem area basis as well. And so the big goal within um, Futurist 
um, would be to make progress towards building a model that builds on the uh, builds on the research that has been done in these individual areas, but also tries to bring together these areas and, and connect them so that we can understand um, how this behaviour operates across different areas and look for, um, we hope, look for um, useful policy insights as a result of this. And at this point, I'll pass over to Stephen to try and talk about how we're going to do this. Um, just to quickly um, pick up on two of the points from Susie's talk. Firstly, it's not a single model. As I said earlier, that one of the things we've learned from the IPCC is that we need a collection of models so that we can feel more comfortable with the, the forecast that those models produce. If you want to talk about crime, particularly uh, related to the London crime, um, Peter, sitting here as my other colleague from UCL, um, is currently studying that particular version, where, interestingly enough, responding to Greg's question about could anybody have predicted it, I think the answer is probably somebody could. They just were not looking at the right indicators. If we can do what Susie suggests by looking at a range of indicators, then it's very likely that we would have been able to pick up some indicators that social unrest was happening. We just hadn't picked it up at that time. So to say what we've been doing with the Future ICT project is actually bringing three communities together. There's lots of others, but these are the main communities we've been bringing together. Those from the ICT domain, computer science. Shut up. <laughs> um, um, those from the, that tells me Susie was under time. <laughs> um, those from the ICT domain, computer science, those from social sciences, and those from complexity science. We've already started to see this happening. We've certainly seen ICT becoming more social. We've also seen compute, um, social science becoming more computational. And certainly complexity science has begun to lead the way of to find solutions to some of the taxing problems we have. We also understand that in terms of the question uh, proposed by Bridget earlier, innovation is actually driven by platforms. If you want to create innovation, you have to create almost an ecosystem that actually um, stimulates that innovation. The internet div did just that for many, many, many businesses. And we see that Amazon that started out as a single bookseller now it is a platform for many businesses to work from. So indeed, this is the focus then of Future ICT, is to create a collection of models and collection of data that can be used as a platform. What we really need to do is to find new models that can come together with new data and allow people to interact with it. The idea is that those models should be really used to simulate and forecast events, whereas the systems measure and make sense of our systems today. The platform then allows people to interact and explore both the data and the models. If we actually bring all the data sources together, this means from sensors, from mobile data, it actually gives us the sense of what's going on on our planet, so we call it the planetary nervous system. If you allow people, businesses, governments, all to interact with the data and models, we call it our global participatory platform. Whereas a mathematician, if the models range from individual walking along the street um, to, through households and businesses and large-scale um, things, this becomes our living earth simulator. So the platform we are trying to develop is a collection of all of these that come together. And this is what the project is really all about. So we believe actually that if we do that, we can actually generate outcomes which are very positive in three particular domains. We think when we combine our knowledge and combine our efforts, we will produce new policy, a better way of producing policy models and help um, firstly understand the science behind that so that it's certainly evidence-based. We also believe it will lead to new technology that actually makes use of the collective awareness and socially adaptive behavior that we see in the community. And this is just not one off, it's a 10 year project. So the idea is to bring those three elements together to form a very large scale project across Europe, which uh, is future ICT. Thank you very much, Steve and Susie. <laughs>